Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. So today I wanted to kind of go over Smart SDR for the Mac. This won't be a super long video because Smart SDR works basically the same way, but there are some key feature differences that I wanted to share with you guys. So let's jump into it. So here is the uh, the preferences on Smart SDR for Mac, and the software is pretty straightforward. You have to add in your radio. You can connect either via uh, Smart SDR or directly over a LAN or by IP address. Either way, we can come up here to the menu and it will show us our options for connecting. And you can set preferences. Thank you. You can set preferences. This is where you do all your setup. This varies a little bit, obviously, from Windows in the way it looks. But this is the, the basic setup. You can set your call lookups, so on and so forth, how the screen looks, any short key, uh, excuse me, hot keys or shortcuts you want to send up, mouse and trackpad use. Um, you can turn off IPv6 and play with a few other things here. We can turn off our amplifier if we're not using it, whether you're going to do any spots, and then information about the program. So we're going to go back here. We're going to click available radios. There is my radio, the signal, because you can't stop the signal. And we'll bring it up, and then we can see the main screen here of Smart SDR. And now this is the this is the Mac version. A lot of it is really similar to the Windows version. It looks a little different because of the way the interface is actually drawn, and so on and so forth. But there are some key differences, and that's really the ones I wanted to share with you. And there's also a version of Smart SDR for iOS, so you can run this on your iPad or your iPhone directly as well. We're not going to mess with that, but we are going to look at the Mac version of Smart SDR. Here is our main pan adapter. Let me, let's change our, let's do this. And this is what the little pop-out menu looks like on the Mac. And from here we can change our band. So let's go to 20 meters. And this is set for FT8 right now because that's the last time I'd used the Mac version. And we can change frequencies. You got a little dial there. You can twirl if you want to. I find it just as easy to type a number in. I have no idea what's on. I'm just jumping around here. Here we go as things start as things start filling in. And just like the Windows version, you can adjust the display and the black level on the screen, that kind of thing. All the all the same settings are here in Smart SDR for Mac. Like I said, the, the biggest difference on a lot of this stuff is the way they look. You have, you can add an extra slice. Obviously you can work split. You can add a tunable notch filter. It works with WSJTX through the DAX audio interface, just like the Windows version does. That's all the same. And like I said, the same basic controls are here. Now, one of the biggest differences with Smart SDR for the Mac is the tools that are available here. You'll see on this drop down. So down here we can, these are a lot of the, the things that um, you can do within Smart SDR for Mac. And this is where you'll find stuff that works differently or is an add on, a feature that is not in the Windows version of Smart SDR. ESK reporter built in. And you can bring this up either in a, a, a globe view like so, or you can use the flat earth map view like that. And you also have uh, another key feature, and that is you have a logbook built into Smart SDR for the Mac. And the neat thing about this version is it will save your logbook data uh, to your iCloud account. So if you're a Mac user, you have an iCloud account, and this can save your logbook and make a backup copy in iCloud. So that's an excellent feature. You have a backup copy. This will also log to multiple services, uh, similar to uh, other programs. This will go to Logbook of the World, QRZ, Club Log, so on and so forth. So you have a bunch of logging options. One of the neatest things that they've added on, uh, this can be controlled by a couple of MIDI, different MIDI controllers. Um, it has a POTA application built in it, where it will populate and you can filter these settings similar to the way you'd filter poda.app on the web and use this. The beauty of doing something like this is I can click one of these and you may have heard the tuner switch and it jumps me to that frequency and changes me to the correct mode. 
So if you're doing POTA hunting, this is an outstanding way to do it. And, and I want to say there are third-party apps that will do that integration on the Windows side. It's all built into Smart SDR on the Mac side. Up here, we also have, I think the coolest feature of Smart SDR on the Mac side is a built-in FT8 client. Let's see, let's change to 20 meters. Let's turn on receive. And now we are back on 20 meter FT8, as you can see over here. And we have our FT8 client running. Similar to WSJTX, I can, I can transmit on odds or evens. I can manually set my frequency by typing it. I can lock my transmit frequency, just like WSJTX. You can set all the different colors. You also have filters. So if you're looking for a specific call, you can put in that specific call and it will alert you when that call pops up in the display on the FT8 client, which is very cool. Like PSK Reporter, we can pull up our map right here of stations and we can look at it in, in true globe form. I'm looking at you, Smoke and Ape. Or we can change to the flat earth smoke and ape version of what the world looks like. It doesn't show the edges of the disc though. So that's part of the FT8 client itself. So once you're playing FT8, you can see here on the screen, we get spots. Again, you can do this with the Windows version, but it requires some third party middleware software to get everything to work. This is built into the Mac version. So I can, I can uh, click on one of these guys and I can move my transmit over to where he is. I can also right click in the middle of the screen. Maybe I'm looking for an empty spot to transmit in and I can say right click and let me set this to be my transmit frequency here. And then maybe I wanna receive over here. So once again, right click, set receive frequency. And now I've set my TX and my RX by right clicking and setting them. You can do that in the waterfall of WSJTX. So this is kind of the same thing, just a little different representation of it. Some of the other tools, and I'm not gonna go through all these. It has a CW keyer. It pops up, this is kind of nice. It has the, the band plan. So that's, um, that's a nice little feature built in. We also have call lookup. This works similarly to the way the one in, um, in the actual log file works. So I can type in a call sign. We'll look up TO and it pulls up his information and any previous QSOs I've had with him. And we can go out and look at his basic information here, or we can pop over to QRZ and, and get the complete data that would be on QRZ. Your audio, this is a big one, and I'm glad I thought of this one. You have a little more control over audio in and out with the Mac version than you do with the Windows version. The biggest difference with the Mac version is that I can set in Smart SDR on the Windows version of Smart SDR. Smart SDR is going to use either the PC or your hand mic or an accessory connection. And if you set it to PC, then it's going to use the default Windows sound device that you have set. Um, my understanding is there's no way to change that in the app. So you have to change your default Windows sound devices, either an output for speakers or whatever input you're using for mic. You don't have that level of control on the Windows version. So this is cool. Um, since logging is built into Smart SDR for the Mac, I can hit the, uh, the key combination here and that will bring up my logbook and let me type in the log information. So with the POTA app up and this, I can pretty much drive hunting POTA from the keyboard completely. So I have a flex tuner and a flex amplifier, and we can drive both of those with this program. We come up here once again to the tools menu, and we go to genius devices, and you can see that the software has found my tuner and my amplifier on the network. So I can click connect, and it'll bring up a window. That's my tuner and go down here and say connect. And there's the amp. And of course we can adjust individual settings. And as you add any other flex enabled devices, you could pop them up here. I don't know what else you'd have besides a tuner and an amp, but we'll go with this for now. So now that I have those devices up, I have separate windows 
This is very similar to the, to the Windows version, the way this works. We have an applet to control and drive the amplifier and one to control and drive the tuner. So I can tune, it puts the amp in standby, tunes and moves on. And then we have the amp set up. And of course we can set over here on this, what Flex calls the angel menu. We can set our drive power here. And of course our tune power and then our profiles and all of that is the exact same kind of deal. Oops, don't want to do that. Same kind of deal as the Windows version, but all the same features are here. The layout is different and there's some built-in features with Smart SDR from Mac that make it a really good choice if you're a Mac user. If you have a Mac, you may want to use this. I would probably use the Mac version instead of installing a VM for Windows. Um, this works great. This software is fabulous and in a lot of ways, honestly, is better than the Windows version because of some of the extras that come with it. The same gentleman, Marcus Roskosh, and I don't remember Marcus's call sign. I'll put it in a thing down here on the screen. Uh, Marcus wrote or was directly involved in the development of the Mac version. He did the Mac version and he was definitely involved in the Windows version. If you're new to Flex and you're watching this, thanks for joining. The biggest difference between the other two, between the two pieces of software is that the Windows version is free up to the major version changes, and then you'll have to pay for an upgrade. So right now we're on 3.x.x, and until it goes to 4, you can download any version of the software that's out there. If you wanted to go back to an old version for some reason, you could. This gets updated via the Mac App Store, as does the iOS version. Marcus is very active about updating this. And the beauty of this version on the Mac is that when he updates, uh, the first time you run the app after an update, it pops up and says, hey, we've made these changes, fixed or added or upgraded, whatever. Other than that, the settings here are identical to what's in Smart SDR for Windows. The rest of the stuff is pretty much the same. It does a lot of the same things. It just does some of it in a different way. And then you have the additional features without having to go to a separate app or anything else. So it would let you use your mouse and keyboard completely to drive everything, including logging. It's all integrated into one app package. Again, Windows will do this, but you have to have some separate apps to do all these features. All right. And then, of course, moving Windows around and sizing them and everything else. You have a built-in help, just like Windows does. And that covers pretty much the major features. Most of it looks and acts like smart SDR for Windows and exactly what you'd expect. But the, the key takeaway from, from the Mac version is that you have a lot of built-in tools that are not part of the Windows version of smart SDR. So guys, that's all I have for today. Thank you for watching. If you would give me a thumbs up, make sure you like the video. Share it to your friends. Subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel. We'd love to have you as a, as a subscriber. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It'll make you feel happy. And make sure you ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new videos. Y'all, thanks. 73. Have a good one.